Welcome. All right, so what I'd like to do is show you how to convert um, a vector into component form. So remember, if we're talking about a vector, um, a vector on our Cartesian coordinate grid could really just be anywhere as long as it has an initial point and a terminal point. So let's just kind of have a vector here. Look something like this. All right, and I'll actually give you an example. Uh, no, actually, yeah. So let's give this an example of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be the initial point. And then we'll have a terminal point, which will be at 1, 2, 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we'll call that point Q. All right. So if I want to convert this, this, um, this vector into component form, again, the reason why I want to do that is because I want to write the same vector, but I want the initial point to be at 0, 0. So therefore, I can have a standardized process of all my vectors. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to follow along with our formula. So we can say our director, p to q, which we're going to call v, is going to equal uh, 3 minus negative. Now let's go through the formula first. So to convert to vector form, what we have is pretty much what I'm just going to label is here. Let's call this x1, y1. And we'll call this x2, y2. So to convert to find vector form, I'm just going to do 3 minus a negative 6, comma, what am I doing? x2 minus x1, comma, y2 minus y1. And that's going to provide us with our vector in component form. So now I have my x1s and my y1s, x2s and y2s. So now let's just go and plug them in. So x2 is going to be 3 minus a negative 6, comma, y2 is 8 minus 4. Minus 4. OK. So now what I go ahead and do with this is by go ahead and subtracting these, um, what I'll have here is x2. That's a negative 8, isn't it? Jeez, oh man. I was wondering. I'm like, that's not right. Right? Negative 4. That's positive 3. OK, we're good. So now let's go and subtract these. 3 minus a, uh, three minus a negative 6. That becomes a double positive. So that becomes 9. And then over here, I have negative 8 minus 4, which is a negative 12. Now, when we write this component form, you know, again, we can a lot of times we'll give them names. Um, in this case, we're just going to call this vector v. So now let's go and plot what exactly this what exactly this vector looks like. So I'm going to go over nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then down negative twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So over nine, down negative twelve. Okay, so now this vector, and it might not be the best representation of it, but what I want you to see is when you look at this, does this look like it's the exact same vector, but just transformed over here, right? It has the exact same length, which we call the magnitude, and, but in the exact same direction. I know my graphing's a little off, but you can see that this direction is exactly the same. These should be parallel, but the only difference is p, that initial point, is now at 0, 0. So by following this formula, what I do is I just find a vector that's in this fo component form that's going to be our, our standard kind of form that we're going to use when working with vectors. So that's how you transfer a vector into component form. Thanks. Does that make a little sense? Pretty easy.